I'm going to bring in now a gentleman who is so... Uh, black people will love me for this. This is a Rabbi Farrakhan. Now, <laughs> listen to this. This guy is... Rabbi? Rabbi Farrakhan. Farrakhan. He's one of the original descendants of of the Israelites <laughs> of the 12th tribe of blacks who were I founded in Israel. And this is, yeah, this is Boy Rabbi... Is right. So let's we'll sit back and listen, <laughs> Melanie, to Rabbi Farrakhan. I'll, I'll do my best. Now, Howard. Rabbi Farrakhan, there is so many different groups out there. You are clearly a black man, are you not? I am a black man. Yes. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and uh, you are... <laughs> Gilbert? <laughs> yes, I am. No, this is... Let me hang up on you later. You know, <laughs> Rabbi... Rabbi... Uh, Rabbi Farrakhan. Shalom, my brother. Right. <laughs> you, uh... Were you at the march yesterday at the rally? Yes, I was, my sister. <laughs> right, and, uh, what did you... Shalom to you, my sister. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You're saying that the black man is originally from Israel, right? Yeah, he is a Jew. Right, the black the man black is... The black man is a Jew. The black man is a big-nosed Jew. <laughs> And what happened along the way? Why did the Jews and the, the, the original Jews, the original black Jews, why did they separate from these white Jews? Well, the white Jews were the Jews that were better in business. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the black Jews were the people who worked for the white Jews. Right. They would sweep up right. in the stalls and right. whatnot. Now you said various other things. I read your book. Yes. Um, he has a book? Yes, he does. Wow. It's, uh, and you say in your book that the original black Jews... Yeah. They are they had big noses, but then uh, through genetics their noses slipped down to their lips. <laughs> yeah. And they got thicker lips and the Jews got bigger noses, right? This is and true. Somehow yeah. their nose got yeah. smashed, right? right? Back into their faces. Right. You see the white Jews to protect their lips from sunburn. Right. Their nose came out more foul. <laughs> yes. So they stayed in the hot part of Israel. In the hot part of Israel. Right. Now, the black <laughs> man, the Jew who was driven out. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the white Jew. Right. His nose met with his mouth right. at the sign of unity. <laughs> <laughs> so his nose united with his mouth? No. Yes. No. It was a reunification. Right. Now, Rabbi Farrakhan, you were at the rally yesterday? Yes, I was, right. my brother. You, you did not get to speak. You are rejected by Muslims and blacks in general because they don't think you're preaching the uh, truth. They don't believe that they're Israelites or Jews. Right. Well, I preach the truth to my brothers whether they are like this or not. Right. You see, because a lot of uh, always you are hated for the truth. Right. Now, I understand you were beat up by uh, several groups at the uh, yeah, rally. I was. <laughs> yeah. Several of them by white Jews. White Jews. In Yamaka. Right. So everyone picked on you. What about the white Jews? Are they real Jews? They are not the real Jews. Who is the real Jews? The real Jews are the black Jews. The, the black man is the real Jew. Right. Okay. So the black man is the real Jew. Now, um, I understand even some of your own followers, and you have a huge congregation, even some of your own followers beat you up. Now, yeah. what, how did they went wrong there? Yeah. <laughs> that happened. See, the congregation is the only huge thing that a Jew has. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so now, what are you here to say? Do you bring us a message of peace? What do you think about O.J.? I understand you think O.J. is innocent. Yeah. It is the white society right. that has attacked the black man, and this is a sign mm -hmm. of the non-unification right. of the white man to accuse O.J. Right. of a crime that he did not commit. Right. So, so you you deny all the blood evidence, you ignore the blood was planted by the white Jew policeman, Mark Furman. Yeah, right. He was a white Jew policeman, right? Who used to be a black man, right? So you don't like white Jews, you only like black Jews. I only like the black Jews, right? Okay, so there he is, Rabbi Farrakhan, to clear it all Where up. Where is his temple? Where is your temple? It's right over here on my head. Right <laughs> no, my I don't mean that temple. I'm talking about your... Where does your congregation meet? <laughs> where do you... Where is the physical ed edifice that you... Uh, oh, I'm yes. on the Black Brothers of Israel. I see. Yes. That's in Jersey? Yes. Yes, uh, yes. all right. Black Brothers of Israel. <laughs> I have a, a song for older black men all right. out there. All right. You're going to sing a song? Yes, Go yes. ahead. This it's is a, a religious... A religious prayer. It's a prayer religious. for older... Ladies and gentlemen... This is the original Jew, well, we feel honored. the black Jew from the 12th tribe in Israel. He is part of the whole black Jew thing. <laughs> and you will now say, and this is a prayer for what? For black unity? For black unity. Right, go ahead. My black brother. Oh, 
Hayashim. Oh, that is beautiful. Let me say something, uh, Rabbi uh, Farrakhan. You must not have very many people in your congregation. <laughs> so as a matter of fact, uh, we're getting a lot of calls. People want to know where they can pray with Rabbi ah, Farrakhan, where wonderful. they can send donations, all this. Rabbi, in all seriousness, Rabbi Farrakhan. Is he looking for donations? Rabbi Farrakhan's temple. I'm a Jew. I'm always looking. <laughs> <laughs> right. Rabbi Farrakhan's temple is at his uh, mother's house where he lived. <laughs> I believe it's in Jersey, and uh, he's been living there with his mother a long time. <laughs> Right. services around the TV. Now, Rabbi Farrakhan, you've been the uh, terrible brunt of persecution in this country. In fact, you are. it is said, and this is a quote, that you are hated by anyone with ears. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> is that true or not? I am. I think that would be universal. <laughs> right. Because it is the Jew right. who used to own the ears. Right. And then ears were later confiscated. Right. And, I, and you are here to say that uh, all men are not equal, that the black Jew is the superior Jew. The black Jew is the superior Jew, because the black Jew is uh, got bigger lips. Right. And he's free, the chosen people. <laughs> and his hair doesn't need combing as often. Right. I notice you have kinky hair. Yeah. Yes. I got kinky hair. Right. And big lips. Right. Okay. So, so <laughs> that's, my lips are so big, I can't pronounce lips. Uh, you can't <laughs> pronounce lips. Yeah, lips. I got big lips. <laughs> wow. Well, I've learned a lot today. Yeah. I've learned never to have you on again. <laughs> or to let you walk out by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, actually, I've really learned a lot today, and I want to thank you for, uh, well, we Rabbi... Well, know there were a lot of... Uh, this whole thing of black Jews with a whole black Jew, uh, Rabbi Farrakhan and all that stuff. Right. It's a whole controversy. It's amazing. Now, uh, we've learned a couple of things, that black Jews have flat noses. Yeah. From uh, pressing up against windows to see the price tag. On things. <laughs> Talk more about that, will you, <laughs> Rabbi? <laughs> okay, Rabbi Farrakhan. Well, it was a plot. Yeah, but it was the Jew that was concerned with the mm. financial endeavor. Now, the prayer that you just said, yeah. uh, if I may interpret, I, I think I understand your language somewhat, uh, being half Jewish. Uh, that says, uh, I wish that being on the radio with Howard would help get me laid. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, it's a prayer that's uh, somewhat meaningless. Meaningless. Right. Right. Very good. All right. Rabbi Farrakhan. Answer. It's a prayer of no hope. Right. He's <laughs> the, ori the original black Jew. He has a great sense of humor. Yes. Right, doesn't he? That's wonderful. All right. And now coming into the studio is Gilbert Gottfried. Hi, Gilbert. Oh, hello. <laughs> well, you know, he sounds so much different than the rabbi. Right. So, Rabbi, Rabbi, can you stay here with us as well? Okay, I could stay here. And, Gilbert, what about you? Can you stay for the news? Well, all right. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried, tonight at Caroline's in New York for two shows. Also, Gilbert is the voice of the parrot in the video Aladdin and the King of Thieves. It's really funny, you know. Every time Gilbert comes in to do a plug, he's really here to plug his Caroline's gig. Sure. But he always throws in that he's the voice of the parrot. That's his one. I think he's very proud well, of Well, Gary says to me, gee, do you think Gilbert gets paid? That's why he's always prone. I go, no, no, no. You understand? Like, this is the most legitimate thing yeah. Gilbert's ever done. <laughs> so he's like, all, he's all proud yeah, of he's it. He's part of the Disney. Audience. Yeah, right. And like the parrot's it's, got a hook beak. <laughs> does it? It's the parrot of Jew, the Rabbi Farrakhan. The parrot is a Jew yes. who was raised in the desert. Right. And it's got a hooked beak and yeah. concerned with making money. Right. And, and no lift. <laughs> no lift. No lift. Mm. All right, Rabbi. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> but yes, he's very proud of his association with that parrot. Yeah, because I think, like Gilbert, in his he mind doesn't goes... doesn't support, promote the USA all, up all night. No. No, he, just, he <laughs> keeps that quiet. So it's like, you know, people actually think, like, Gilbert met Robin Williams and got to work on the thing with him. <laughs> Man, but you've never seen Robin Williams. Never, never met him once. <laughs> <laughs> but in their mind... And they think like, wow. Right, that's right. right. Okay. Um, let me take a short break, Robin. Let's begin the news. All Gilbert's right. going to be here, and he'll be at Caroline's in New York for two shows. When is that? Tonight. Uh, tonight. Tonight. Big, if you want to have a good laugh, uh, oh, stay away from Caroline's tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Will Rabbi Farrakhan be there? Yes, Rabbi Farrakhan. Will Rabbi Farrakhan be there? Yeah. Yeah. I shall be there. All right. Good. Okay. Rabbi Farrakhan. He's a big, big supporter of comedy. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> You're listening to The Howard Stern Show. Let's return to The Howard Stern Show. Oh, what is that, Rabbi Farrakhan? Oh, you, don't, oh. you don't actually buy a car? You prefer hot wiring? Yeah, well, see, because buying <laughs> is the white man trying to rip off the black community. I see. Robin, um, before we start news, there is a black woman on the phone who, since we're into this whole racial discussion this morning, wants to uh, ask us... A quiz to see how well we know black people. Okay, that's a good idea. You like that. Rabbi, would you like to... Uh... <laughs> I will uh, take part of that endeavor. <laughs> All right. Please. Hello. Howard. Yes. Howard. I am sick of you Thank and you. that 
faking black woman in the background there. Yeah. <laughs> pretending that you know so much about black people. I have been trying to get in touch with you for the longest. I have a, a little test, a ten-question test. Yes. Well, I will do the best on it because I grew up. Okay. You you claim that, yeah, you know so much. Okay. Uh, if Jackie and Fred and Robin wants to take it, they can. But we already know that Jackie is a definite white man. And Fred, if anything, he needs to take a test to make sure he's a human being. <laughs> right. You're, you're right. Okay. Yeah. But, and, and Robin, she just ought to go out this afternoon and buy her a blonde wig because she's definitely white. Right. I'm going to do that. Now. And Rabbi... If I fail the test, I'll do that. But what about Rabbi Farrakhan? Please, he's a joke. <laughs> he's, a jo <laughs> he's a total joke. <laughs> he's, just a, he's a goof. I don't even know why you even have him there. I don't know. Anyway, right. I, have I am a proud member of the <laughs> black Shut community. Up, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Everybody, I should not be spoken down to. Shut up. I must have okay. respect okay. among my now community. Words. Well, you believe in the fact that you are a god, and this woman is a god if she is a black woman, right? I am a black Puerto Rican. Oh. Then that makes you black. Yes, I am Because black. a Puerto Rican is, is yes. Indian and Chinese <laughs> and Swedish. Yeah, right. So and that would be mama, black. Yeah, it would be black. Who's your mama? Right. Anyway. All right, go ahead. That is a very uh, black well, term. Wait a minute, if you're a Puerto Rican, how can you test this on how much we know about black people? Black. Well, according to Rabbi, uh, uh, Rabbi uh, uh, Farrakhan, <laughs> according to Rabbi Farrakhan, yes. uh, Puerto Ricans are black. Am I correct? Uh, that, that is true. And the original Israelites were black as well. well the original Israelites... <laughs> Uh, was Swedish, Norwegian, uh, German, yes, and uh, Filipino. Right. <laughs> now, ma'am, you say you are black, but you're from Puerto Rico. But no, uh, I am a black Puerto Rican. My mother's black, and my father's from Puerto Rico. All right. And what's the oh, punchline? What, what is it? <laughs> that makes me all messed up. Okay. All right. Let us uh, get to your quiz. Let's okay, get to the quiz. One. Well, we need pencil and paper. Yes, you will, because I want you to write down the answer. As a black man, I do not know how to write. Oh, <laughs> okay. Because the white man held back my education. <laughs> is there to put a muzzle on that man? No. How many questions do you have to get right yes. in order to be oh, black? That's what I wanted to ask you. Would 70 be a good passing point for you? Yes, it would, ma'am. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Question number one. All right. Notice what? Rabbi Farrakhan has no interest in writing down his answers. <laughs> oh, okay. He's going right. to try to sabotage the test. Yes. Okay. Okay, question She's number She's going to throw off the curve. <laughs> yeah. When you want to say, you write down your answer, don't blurt it out. All right, nobody blurt out the okay. answer. All right. When you want to say, excuse me, pardon me, I was wrong, or I made a mistake. When you want to say that, there's two words that you say. What are those two words? Uh-oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah, see, All right. the problem's All already. Right. <laughs> hmm. Uh, why don't the people... All right, I got it. All right. All right. Okay, this is a call and response. Is it, is it F-U? Oh, no. <laughs> no. All right, go ahead, next. The next question is... The next one is a call and response. I say something to you, you answer me back. Right, All but right. obviously just write down your answer. Right. Go ahead. Hey, yo. I never heard of this. Yes, if you were black, you would. All right. All right, I uh, I have my response written down. <laughs> you might not like it, honey. All right, number three. Number three is a multiple choice. Number three is a multiple oh, thank choice. God. Thank yeah. God. But I just want to say, so far, Rod's got a hundred. Oh, did he? He's out there yelling out all these answers. All right, well, you we'll bring. Uh, Let's see. Let him write them down. Maybe he's. Tell Rod, Rod to write them okay. down. Write them down. I think I'm okay. blacker than Rod. Number three. No way was that. Yeah. Number three. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is a multiple choice. Go ahead. I'm gonna snuff you. Does that mean kiss, punch, kill? Or leave. All right, go ahead. Next question. Uh, what were the choices again? A is punch, kill, or leave? No, 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 hold on. A is kiss, B is punch, C is kill. All right, go ahead. Jackie's okay. a moron. Right. Go ahead. I even, told you he was a white man. Even the rabbi got that one. <laughs> go ahead, Jackie. Yes. She got a gas face. Is that A pretty, B light, C pass gas, or D a dirty look? She has a gas face? Yes. Yeah. G A S, gas and, face. And what are the uh, choices? A pretty, B light. C, pass gas. D, dirty look. All right, go ahead, number five, please, quickly. Uh, it's the bomb. Is that good or bad? All right, go ahead, number six. Uh, the nine pound. What? The nine pound. The nine, the nine pound. pound. Yeah. Like the number nine and then pound. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, boy. Uh, what's the hoopty? Well, what happened to nine pound? That's, that you have to write down what that means. You have to write down the, the, the definition. For what a nine pound is? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Uh, what's a hoopty? All right, a hoopty. Okay, go ahead next. Uh, locations. These are locations. Mm -hmm. Geographical locations. Go ahead, sweetheart. Right. Up north. Mm hmm. Strong Island. Wait a minute. Up wait a minute, north. Wait a minute. Hold on. Up north. Yeah. 
All right. Strong Go ahead. Strong Island. Say what again? Strong Island. Strong Island. Boogie Down. Wait a wait, minute. Wait, wait, wait. We, we got a right. One number nine. Oh, number nine is Strong Island. Yes. All right. Strong Island. No, these are locations. Just one, one question. Oh, well, what, what is the question? Okay, where's up north? Oh, is that number eight? Yeah, yeah the Hoopty, I guess we're all Hoopty was number seven. Right. Number yeah. eight is up north. N no, this is number eight is a, a five point question. Oh, all right. Where right. is oh. up north? Now give us the choices. There's no choice. I'm not giving you you no gotta choice. know. You have to tell me, Mr. I Marshall. know where it is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Then what is Strong Island? Is that another that's question? Another location. That's, that's the second. Okay. That's the second. All right. Okay. So that's number nine. Miss <laughs> White Girl, I like that. Boogie Down. Down. You should pray to God you don't know these locations. All right. Boogie what is Down. it? Wait, wait. Strong Island. Yeah. Boogie Down. Hold all on. Right. Strong Island. That must be. This is all number eight. <laughs> no, it's all. Yes. Yes. It is. yes. Oh, well, number eight. Go ahead. All right. Strong Island. Yeah. Boogie Down. Boogie Down. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead. The hill. The hill is. Uh, it's Reddy Murphy lives, isn't it? Shaolin. What is it? The Hill? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. And what's Shaolin. the other one? Shaolin? Shaolin. Shaolin. Uh, spell that. Oh, S -A -J, like L -I -N. S-H-A-L-I-N. Shaolin. Shaolin. Oh, one. boy. All right, sweetheart. Go ahead. Number nine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm still working on it. We'll be here all day with this quiz. <laughs> yeah, number nine. Do you think number I care nine. that much about black people? When you say something is butterfuco, is that A, a fag, B, like... <laughs> Oh, Joey's going to love this. You mean the blacks say Buttafuco? Yes. Oh, wow. Go ahead, yes. Right. Is it A, a fag? Right. Is it B, like cool, you know, Go ahead. good? C, is it none of the above or is it D, all of the above? Go ahead. And number 10. Mom's do. What'd what you say? Mom's do. Mountain do? Mom's do. Mom's do? Oh, I know what that is. All right. Here we go. All right. <laughs> uh, get in, Rod. <laughs> I want to hear y'all's answers. Well, that's what you're going to hear. You're going to hear everything. You're going to hear y'all's answers in a minute. Yeah. This sounds like a foreign language. It's just Rod's blurting out the answers out there, and then it sort of makes sense. All right. Now, everybody has their answers written down. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, the first question, I believe, was what? How do you say, pardon me, excuse me, I was wrong, I made a mistake? All right. Now, first of all... Uh, all right. With your great vast knowledge. The first right. thing I was going to write down was that, excuse me, excuse me, but I didn't write that down because that's too obvious. I said, uh, say what? No. no uh, what did you say, stupid. Rabbi? Okay, uh, the black man do not apologize. <laughs> he say, I did nothing wrong. Right. I've been accused of something that was not my criminal activity. Right. <laughs> okay, that's good. I, that sounds right to me. <laughs> it's just in two words. Yeah, right. <laughs> two words You are, uh, Rabbi Farrakhan, you are such a proud black man. You would never say you did anything wrong. I did not do nothing wrong. Right, this is like the black SATs. Okay, uh, Robin, what did you say? Nuff said. Nuff said. <laughs> and uh, Jackie, what'd you say? I said, word up. <laughs> I have no idea right, what, what did you mean. say. I said, shut up, bitch. <laughs> and what did you say, Rod? My bad. That's right. My what? bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Right. What was the question again? Are you saying? <laughs> are you <laughs> saying move, get out of the way. Excuse me. Uh, my bad. Oh, yeah, makes sense. Like, so, pardon me, excuse me, so, my so, bad. So would it yeah. be said like this, my bad? No, no, no. If you, if you, <laughs> if, if I say to you, if you say to me, okay, Denise, um, Denise, the elbows, no, the if you say Denise, <laughs> Denise, that car that you you said hit you was not black; it was red. And you said, my bad. I thought it was, it was um. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I, I made a mistake. mistake. I made a mistake. Why well, can't you just say I made a mistake? What are you saying? What are you saying? I'm sorry. That my was error. Wrong. Mm. Now, Rabbi, you are a black a Jew. Now, my bad to you means too expensive, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. That, that means it's not a sale date. Right. It's, it's my bad. bad. Um, all right, well, all right, bad. let's go to number two. Right, number two, hey, yo, how do you respond to that? Hey, yo. Now, I wrote down, get the hell away from me. No, no, I said, I said, hey, yo. That's what I said. I said, hey, yo, back too. Yeah. Rod, what do you say? All right. That's right. All right. All right. Yeah. What did you say, Rabbi? I said, yo, my pig sister. All right. All right. All right. So what does I you mean? What? What does I you mean? It means like if both of us go somewhere, I, you. No, no, no. no. What does it mean? You, you said that there was a thing you yell out, I, you. No, hey, yo. Hey, yo. Yeah, hey, yo. And what do I say back? I. 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 You know, like you go to a concert. Oh, we got it. We got it. Honey, you better get a job. I, number three. 
Yeah. Number three. Now, what do you say, honey? What do you say if a black man comes up to you and goes, ah, you? <laughs> you say, excuse me, that's a sneeze. Ah, <laughs> 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 you. Ah, you. Bless you. They Bless don't you. come up to me and go, ah, uh, you. <laughs> you say All right, honey, go ahead. Uh, what okay. was the next question? I'm going to snuff you. All right, I said, uh, kill. What did you that's say, Rabbi? Well, snuff <laughs> is uh, depending on all of the above. Uh, snuff can mean. What, what are my choices again? A, kiss. B, punch. C, kill. D, leave. Okay. Uh, you see, you All kiss right, them, up, Rabbi. then you get punched by them, <laughs> yeah. then you got to snuff them, it's then you got to leave. All right, did anybody say anything beside kill? No. no. Punch. Fred? He, he's uh, right. It's yeah. Punch. Chill. It's oh, it's punch. punch. It's punch. I'm going to snuff you means I'm going to punch you in your face or punch you. All right. Well, I wouldn't have known that. All right. See, you're all wrong. All right, number four. Nope. Number four. She got a gas face. All right, I said light. Dirty luck. Dirty luck. I you're said... right, Robin. Dirty luck. Uh, finally. One, yeah. one right for the white girl. And okay, number five. Go ahead. Number five is, um... No, a gas face means... Yes. That... Yeah, go ahead. Well, a choice was someone being pretty... Number five is... Or... No, let, 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 let the rabbi speak, please. So it means someone who's pretty and farts. And it's somebody who has a gas face. They're pretty, but they also have a gastric problem. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Number five. <laughs> Was that Fred that, that said, um, um... What's number five, honey? I'm, I'm writing down your scores. It's the bomb. The that bomb? That's a big that... pod. All right, I wrote down good. Robin, what did you write good. down? What did you write down, Fred? Good. Jackie? Good. Uh, He's Rabbi? Right. That's an extra big pod. All right, and, uh, Rob... right on that. All right, good. Okay. Um, I think the next one was, um... What's the nine? What's nine the pounds. All right, I wrote down uh, either a. Uh, uh, I wrote down penis. Nope. <laughs> In my case. I think the nine pound is a baby. Nope. I put down it's a gun. No. I was going to put down a Big Mac or something. No. What, what is it, uh, Fred, do you say? Uh, I had my penis. And what no. did you say, Rabbi? I say a nine pound is more than an eight pound and less than ten pounds. <laughs> All right. And, Rod, what did you say is a nine pound? Uh, I thought it was 96. It's 95. 95? Yeah. What's 95? 1995. Hmm. When you say something's from the nine pound, that means from 1995. Oh, See, it was marked down to 1995 by the Jew store owner. All right, number seven. Go ahead. What was the question? Um, what's a hoopty? Uh, I said basketball. Fred, what did you say? I had hoopty in the blowfish. <laughs> what did you say, Robin? I said that must be a vagina. <laughs> what did you say? I said vagina. What did you say, Rabbi? Uh, I, it's a small hula hoop. A hula hoop that has not yet grown up. And to what did you say, Rod? It's a broken down car. That's right. <laughs> it's usually low to the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, Dominicans drive cars like that. <laughs> it's just always that. All right, number eight was what? The, the the five definitions. What's right. up north? What did you say, Robin? Staten Island. What did you say, Fred? Harlem. What did you say, Jackie? Uptown. I said Bronx. What did you say? As opposed to the lower part of the north. And what is it, Rod? I don't know. And what did it's, you, ma'am, what is it? Okay, it's upstate. Like, people go to jail and they say they just came from up north. That means okay. they just came and number two was what? Jail. What was the number two location? Strong Island. Long Island. All right, I said, um, I said Puerto Rico. Long Island. Really? Yeah. What did you say, uh, Fred? I had Bronx. Long Island. What did you say? I, I said he was Long Island's stronger cousin. <laughs> Strong Island. So, Jackie, Jackie and Robin got that right. It is Long Island? Yeah. Jeez, how did that happen? What's the Boogie black. Down? <laughs> yeah. Boogie Down is Brooklyn. What do you say, Fred? I would, I would concur. I said Harlem. What did you say? I thought it was a club. What did you say, Robert? All of y'all are wrong. I said it was a show starring Jimmy Walker that was not given uh, enough Proper chance. time slot by the white yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. oh, Boogie Down is the Bronx, you're right. Boogie Down, I was right? No, no nobody no. got that right. That's Bronx? She's yeah. right, I'm saying. It's oh. the Boogie Down Bronx. All right, number four. What, the what, Hill. Number four, go ahead. The Hill. I said Jersey, Robin, what'd you say? Jeez, the Hill. I'm wrong again because I said that was the Bronx. What did you say, Fred? I had Manhattan. What did you say, Jackie? I thought it meant oral sex. What do you say, Rabbi? It's the difference of the hill and the mountain. I see. Yeah. And what do you say, Rod? I don't be knowing the answer. What is the answer? Staten Island. Oh, hmm. well, that's Staten Island. Oh, because of right, and number five was what? Shaolin. And I said that was Japan. What did you say, Robin? Chinatown. What did you say? I, it's the only one I could think of. Dan, what did you say? I said heaven. What did you say? I said it's Alan King's black brother, Shaolin King. <laughs> All right. And what did you say? It's Staten Island. <laughs> what is it? Shaolin is Brooklyn. Oh. oh. All right, number nine, was, what was the question? Um, Butterfuco. I say that's a fag. Stop. What did you say, Jackie? Fag! What do you say, Robin? What were the other choices? Because think about it, but... Fag, fag is, is... A fuco. B was cool, like good and slick and cool. All right, I say C, it's that one. I think it's B. C uh, was 
All of, none of the above, and D was uh, no, all, all of, of the above. And what do you say, Fred? I say none of the above. And what do you say? Uh, but a few go implies a black man who works in a gas station uh, who has sex with a girl, and then the girl shoots his wife. <laughs> all right. And uh, what do you say, Rod? Good. Good. All right. What do you? What is it? It's both of the above. I'm gonna tell you the difference. All right. In jail. I work in a jail. I'm, I work in a jail. Yeah, in that jail. doesn't surprise me. I work, huh? You make license plates there. No, I work in a jail. I'm a seal. Mm -hmm. In jail. Um, I was a walrus. They call Butterfuco a fag. Right, because it's butt. Yeah. A fuco. Yeah, they right. fit. Right. They fit. And then out in, the, out in the world, that's what they call it when you're out in the streets. That out in the world, they say Butterfuco. My son told me this one means that it's good, like your coat is butter. It's good. You know, your coat is slick. It's, it's cool. Really? So it's all of the above. I can't right. believe it. And uh, uh, two definitions for it. Number ten. Moms do. What'd you say? Moms, Moms do. do. Moms do. I think that's having a baby. Uh, what do you think, Fred? Vagina hair. I said it's. Um, I said it's a woman's uh, a sexually excited woman. Go ahead. I said it was a haircut. Go ahead. That was uh, Moms Mabley before she changed her name. <laughs> right. All right. Real name is um, Moms. Rod, do you know what it is? Uh, your mother. That's right. Your mother. Just your mother. You call, yeah. Uh, instead of calling. It, it, um, if you're talking to your friend or someone else about you, say moms do. You know what? I'm sick of you, lady. You don't say my mother. <laughs> All right. That was, a good, that was a good quiz. Thank but you. You know what? Yes. None of us are black. All of y'all, you, Howard, are the biggest fake, and I just... Ah, uh, screw you. I grew up... <laughs> <laughs> Go buy the blonde wig on after you leave. Hey, honey. Uh, uh, let me just say one thing to you. Yo! Hey! Hey, yo! Sui! Honey, all that information will get you nowhere. Yeah, it's totally worth it. Hey, listen, I didn't say it was, but you're the one always portraying. Ah, be quiet. Learn to work at McDonald's. I have to Every, be quiet. But all these I people are calling in and saying she got one part of this whole test wrong. Which part? Yeah. The hill is Queens and Charlin is Staten Island. Right. Not as far as I you know. You're not even black. Yes, Goodbye. Listen, yeah. Howard. Yeah. I want to tell you something. I love you, white man. Thank you. And you want to know something? Yeah. I realize you are qualified to carry on a conversation with a felon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, goodbye. Right, I, love I love you. you. I love you too, right, baby. Everybody. So long, baby Shaolin. Can I say hello to somebody? Uh, yeah, out your window. Put you down. Where's the telephone? Go ahead. I need to say hi to Raymond, my jewelry guy from Fordham Road. It's you guy. All right, thank you. All right, all right. All right. All right. Go sell drugs to a convict. I want you to say hello to Misha, my Jew guy. All right. My <laughs> Jew guy. All right, we got to take a break, and then we'll do the news all right. right after this. We're back with the Holland Stern Show. And let me remind you that uh, Gilbert Gottfried, the comedian, <laughs> is definitely Buttafuco. <laughs> and that'll be Buttafuco tonight at Caroline's in New York for two shows. Go see Gilbert when he really snuffs you. <laughs> and uh, Gilbert also is uh, going up north to promote his video, Aladdin and the King of Thieves. And most people agree my show is very bad. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a nine <laughs> pounds. It's a bomb. It have nine pounds. Nine pounds is from 95. All right. It means nothing. He didn't do new material in uh, 96. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, it's nine pounds. It's a very 95 kind of act. And I have gas during my act. Right. Well, you're but a Fuko, you <laughs> fag. <laughs> Actually, Gilbert weighs nine pounds. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. But your mom's do is with me, man. All right. Let's do some news. We have, uh, we have Gilbert Gottfried, the comedian here, and also... Rabbi Farrakhan, right. the world's <laughs> foremost black Jew. <laughs> yeah. And they both sound so different. <laughs> what a voice, man. That parrot sounds different, too. All right. Whew, where to start? Where to start? Yes. There is your music. That's the best place to start, Robin. Uh, Very serious. <laughs> Touchy. Uh, this is good. Yeah, I just had one comment. I was, I was so happy that nobody covered... The Million Man March, or the anniversary of the Million Man March, you know, Farrakhan had to uh, go find other ways to get a little more publicity. All anybody knew was that he was out there and he was tying up traffic. Nobody spent any time dwelling on what he had to say. One note, in page six today, they said that Spike Lee would not have been too happy if he had shown up for the rally at the U.N. Plaza because... There were bunches of people selling bootleg copies of his new movie, Ooh. Get on the Bus. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I don't agree with that. Well, that's absolutely wrong. And right. a black man selling another black man's movie bootleg, hmm. I'm sure, would be considered a sacrilege. What do you make of this, Rabbi Farrakhan? 
I think he should allow the black man into the financial arena by right. selling his movies. <laughs> right. <laughs> if he truly supports the black man, right. he should allow him to sell bootleg copies of his movie. <laughs> Your logic is very clear on this. Yes. Yeah. Because he speaks the word that saying that he uh, wants to support the black man in his financial endeavors. Now, let me ask you, Rabbi, this is a, a question because uh, it's still criminal activity. What if they sell a bootleg Aladdin tape? Which, uh... Well, that would be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I see what that says. Yeah, that's on any circumstance. Right. To sell a bootleg Aladdin. <laughs> right, I okay. See. Go ahead, Rob. All right. I'm <laughs> glad uh, we got that cleared up. There is a difference. He's very clear on that. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of bootlegs, there are fake... See, bootlegs yes. is a black term. Yes. It means legs made to wear boots. <laughs> right. Bootlegs. Thank you, Rabbi. <laughs> Rabbi Farrakhan, the world's foremost black girl. Now moving along, <laughs> Rabbi, <laughs> to the story about <laughs> counterfeit Yankee World Series tickets that have hit the market. They are of such high quality, there's very little ability to tell the difference between a real ticket and one of these fake tickets. Hmm. So now they don't know what they're going to do about it, but uh, these high-quality fakes, the only thing that you can um, use to tell whether you have a counterfeit or the real thing is that there's a watermark, uh, the hmm. Major League Baseball watermark, on the uh, real tickets that can be seen under an ultraviolet light. Hmm. So now they don't know what they're going to do at the games when people show up with seats for the same, you know, with tickets for the same seats. Very they say sad. that uh, these fake people will have to be asked about to leave. <laughs> right. You know, even though they've paid good money, good money for their tickets, they've just been ripped off. Everybody taking advantage of everyone else. Yeah. So sad, Rabbi. So sad. Yeah. And the Dewater Moss hmm. is the Moss Brothers' black brother. You know, you're always one too many jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, always one too many, Why right, Robin? Be any different. Right. Absolutely. You're on such a roll, and then you ruin it. Meanwhile, Yankees tickets right. that, uh, generally cost seventy dollars are going for anywhere from two hundred seventy-five dollars a seat to two thousand dollars a seat. Right. Oh, People all excited about the Yankees going to the series after not being in the World Series for fifteen years. Well, I say cancel baseball and cancel Gilbert's next appearance. <laughs> And Rabbi Farrakhan. Oh, Meanwhile, oh, right. the Atlanta Braves have done the impossible. After being down three games to one right. in the series, they have come back and evened up the series, so now it's a winner-take-all situation. No other team's been able to do this. Is that what you're saying? That's right. No, well, very few. Hmm. And so they would make history hmm. if they beat the St. Louis Cardinals tonight and wind up going into the World Series. Here hmm. is the last play of the game yesterday. What number is that? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> what number B is that? Number 15. <laughs> Rabbi Farrakhan, do you ever play baseball? Yeah, I played the baseball. I don't believe that. I mean, there isn't a muscle on your body. I can't imagine. <laughs> How many innings in a game, Rabbi? Well, you see, the Jew <laughs> yeah, okay. don't play he baseball. Play on the team. <laughs> he doesn't? No, he fights about having to pay the baseball player. Uh -huh. I see. Yeah. All right, here he is. This is the last play of the game. All right. The Redbirds are... Uh, down to their last strike. The 3 2 pitch. Here it comes. Try three called, and Atlanta wins this one 3 to 1. That's it. We go to game number seven. Now I look at the rabbi's physique and I say, not only can he not play baseball, he's not built well enough to watch baseball. He's collapsed. I've never seen a man with a boy's body like that. Where do you shop, Rabbi? <laughs> a rabbi. With full, uh, full uniform. There. I shop at the Black Rabbi Shop. Really? Yeah. There is such a place? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I see. Wow. Built like a, like a Cub Scout. Speaking of the World Series, Howard, <laughs> Daryl Strawberry hurt himself in one of those uh, last games oh against the Orioles. He has a broken toe. Hmm, I thought he broke his nose. <laughs> <laughs> nope, he has a broken toe. Right. But Daryl says they d they've built him a special shoe, and he does not expect it to affect his play. Please play number 19. Uh-oh. I'm not going to even think about the toe once Saturday night comes oh. when the game starts. Um, mm. You know, that's not going to be in my mind to sit around and think about it. Um, it's an injury, and we all know it's there, but um, I don't want to um, allow that to affect what I'm trying to accomplish. Well, suddenly he's uh, not persona non grata anymore. People no, like him. No, they like him. In fact, on Turning Point tonight, which is one of those ABC News magazine series, 
they will be interviewing Daryl Strawberry and Dwight Gooden, the two comeback kids mm. in this World Series. Here is Dwight Gooden recounting his suicide attempt. Really? Yes. Play mm -hmm. number four. Hmm. See, you hang around long enough. And, uh, isn't that true? Yeah, well, Gooden is the black term for being very good. It's right. Gooden. It's good. Yeah, it's Gooden. All right. And when a great black baseball player hurts his toe, what is that called? Bob Dole toe? <laughs> what is it called? What is it called? It's called Ben. All right. At the gun, I just said, I, mean, I just got to end it right here. And it's mm. like I remember putting the, the gun to my head. Um, I remember my wife coming in the room, and she just totally freaked out. I think she called my mom. My mom came down, and my mom oh, grabbed the gun out of my hand. <laughs> my point is, like, my whole body was just numb. Wow, he was in bad shape. His wife was a coward. She <laughs> let his mom deal with it. Yeah. She was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I could get hit by a stray bullet. You're not kidding. Meanwhile, um... My mom grabbed a gun and shot Dwight my wife. Tells us, <laughs> <laughs> Dwight tells us when he drank. Here he is, he is at number 13. All right. This is about his drinking. Yeah, when did he drink? For some guys and stuff, but for me, being a pitcher, um, you know, you only pitch once every fifth game. I would uh, pick my spots, like, uh, it's definitely the day after I pitch. Whether if I had a good game, I would drink to celebrate. If I had mm. a bad game, I would drink so I can go to sleep and not think about it. So either way, I was going to drink, but I always gave myself a couple of days before I pitch to totally shut it down and do nothing. Hmm. See, he, he was sort of working with it, drinking only on the days he wasn't <laughs> pitching. Rabbi, giving uh, himself a couple of days to dry out. It's very sad. As a black man, you uh, must be upset when you hear about a brother... Sinking to the depths yeah, through alcohol. Yeah, you see alcohol. a lot of this. What are you doing? Here. What are you doing in the black community to help uh, brothers like this get off alcohol? Well, when I hear of a black brother like that mm. being so low that his life is so low, I, I usually need a drink. Right, you start drinking. <laughs> yeah, I start drinking. <laughs> oh, wow. So you uh, you start drinking when you get depressed. Well, because that spares me the pain that the white man has put on me. Right. Now, what kind of wine do you drink? Uh, Morgan David or T-Bird? You must be confused because you're a black Jew. Well, I drink uh, Morgan Goldstein. Morgan Goldstein. Oh, All yeah. Right. Wow. That's it. All right, Let's now listen to Dallas Strawberry. <laughs> Play number 14, and he will, we will learn uh, when he became heavily addicted. All right. I hadn't got a really serious addicted to it until I think I basically when I went back to the West Coast to L.A. Hmm. Back home and started, you know, running into a lot of old friends and people. And That's where I get started addicted. going to parties and drinking and using. And before I knew it, you know, I just, you know, just got hooked on me. I went to L.A. I came back. I could hardly function. And what has he learned now? You know, he's been through the whole rehab thing. What has he learned? Who? That heroin's five. better. Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> Daryl Strawberry. Number five. Number five. Yeah, so he learned something. Yes, and we're going to learn it, too. All right, let's learn it all together. But I had to learn that um, I can't go to old slippery places no more. I can't go down to the TGI Fridays and, 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 and sit there and, and fool myself and sit at the bar. I can't go to Hooters and fool myself that I'm just going there to have a bite to eat. You know? Oh, yeah. And, you know, you got the little girls running around with the shorts on and the little tight shirts. You know, come on. See, these are things that, uh, you know, the people in recovery, especially athletes, have a problem with. Good. After the, after the game, we'll tie you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's pretty funny. He can't go and fool himself. Rabbi, and do you have a... sit there at the bar and not... See, I used to go to Hooters because of the food. Right. <laughs> they have a good cuisine there. <laughs> they do. Yeah. So, in other words, as a religious man, you would not go there to look at the girls in the, in the shorts. Tight. I do not believe in, in objectifying the woman. Uh, I'm sorry? I do not believe in objectifying the female. Oh, woman. I see. All right. So, I go there for their good food. Right. So, you like it there. Yes. Right. So, you go to scores for the videos. Right. So anyway, you are here to say that you and your practice as a rabbi, as the first black rabbi, really, you say that you many times will counsel these young brothers who have fallen uh, off the wagon. Yeah. See, if they fall off the wagon, usually they hurt themselves. Right. <laughs> Man, am I? I I gotta tell you, Rabbi, I'm real sick of you. <laughs> you would say, Rabbi, yes. stay on the wagon and don't hurt yourself. Yeah. Right. You stay on the wagon. You don't want anybody to fall. Hold on. See, because if you're riding on a wagon, you yeah. hold on to the sides of the wagon. What else is on the uh, news uh, agenda, Robin? <laughs> last night, Howard. Who is it? We have the presidential debate. Yes. Now, I want to hear about Everybody that. Everybody said that Bob Dole was on the attack. Right. So we will listen. Good. I want to hear that. Recreate. 
the great debate, the last debate that we will be able to see between uh, Bob Dole and President Bill Clinton. And who do the black Jews support? <laughs> <laughs> who do the black Jews support? The black Jews support Chase Manhattan. No, who do they support? No, who do they support? Bob Dole or Clinton? Well, see, Clinton has a sudden accent. Right. So uh, you could close your eyes and imagine it is a black man. Right, right. So you're for Clinton because he is a southern actor. But Dole has one arm that's paralyzed. Right. So this reminds us that we as a community are paralyzed. Right, right, right. So we are very drawn between <laughs> the two. All right, so let's listen to the debate and we'll help the rabbi decide. Yes. Right. Uh, here is Bob Dole attacking the president's credibility. Okay. Play number six. Number six. This is him on the attack. Yes. Attacking his credibility, Robin. Number six, please. Very excited. When you're the President of the United States, you have a public trust. And you have to keep that public trust, as George Washington as Abraham Lincoln did. Uh -huh. And I think now that trust is being violated. And it seems to me we ought to face up to it. And the President ought to say tonight that he's not going to pardon anybody that he was involved in business with who might implicate him later on. Here's Bob Dole attacking President Clinton uh, his, and his administration because of the 900 FBI files that they got a hold of. Number one, please. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. You have 30-some in your administration who either left or being investigated or in jail or whatever. Then you've got an ethical problem. It's public ethics. I'm not talking about private. We're talking about public ethics. When you have 900 files gathered up by some guy who was a bouncer in a bar and hired a security officer to collect files in Watergate. I know a person went to jail for looking at one file, one FBI file. There are 900 sequestered in the White House. 900. Uh, now, I'm a little confused. Maybe you can answer this question. Yes. Hearing what Bob Dole just said, uh, I'm being serious. Uh, do the fingernails on his bad hand grow? <laughs> <laughs> or do they just stay deadened like the rest of the fingers? Oh, you. Let's go on. Made me think of it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, think of it. <laughs> rabbi. No, no, forget the rabbi. Yeah. Finally, after yeah. The, it was a 90 minute debate, yes. and Bill Clinton refused to respond to any of these attacks. You mean he would just sit there? He would just go on and talk about issues. Right. And things he's done as a president, he would not respond when Bob Dole mentioned these character flaws or these administration problems. Mm -hmm. Finally, after 60 minutes of listening to this, Bill Clinton chose to respond. Here is Bill Clinton answering Bob Dole's charges that he has a, an immoral and unethical administration. Please play number 11. You've got a lot of numbers today. <laughs> no attack ever created a job or educated a child or helped a family make ends meet. <laughs> Boy, that's avoiding No a insult ever cleaned up a toxic waste dump or helped an elderly person. Now, for four years, that's what I worked on. If you give me four years more, I'll work on it some more. Now, Rabbi, you've got to wonder, neither candidate is a Jew or a black man. Would you care to comment? Well, see, see, this is a tough thing. Uh, the black man <laughs> has to support Dole because he can hold the pen but not really be able to use it. Right. So this is why there is a stronger support for him. Oh, I see. But, but Clinton was actually a Jew several centuries ago. He was. <laughs> and uh, Dole was a black Jew several centuries ago. Oh, he was. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, there you go. Well, even though the president says he will do all these things, Bob Dole says he can't trust the president's word. Play number eight, please. Okay. And I'll just make you one promise. My word is good. Democrats and Republicans are going to work for Bob Dole's word is good. I keep my word. I promise you the economy is going to get better. We're going to have a good economic package. And we're going into the next century a better America. Douchebag says what? <laughs> well, Bill Clinton responds that um, he has one vision of America and Bob Dole has another. Please play number 10. Okay. This election is about two different visions about how we should go into the 21st century. Would we be better off, as I believe, working together to give each other the tools we need to make the most of our God-given potential? Or are we better off saying, you're on your own? Well, I've learned one thing. What? The rabbi should stay in his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Bill Clinton should yes. take a little jab at uh, Bob Dole because of uh, his age. Play number two. All right. <laughs> Went after the age issue. I see. 
I can only tell you that I don't think Senator Dole is too old to be president. It's the, uh, <clears throat> the age of his ideas that I question. Uh, you're almost not old enough to remember this, but we've tried this before, promising people an election year tax cut that's not paid for. We tried it last time you ran. Telling you can have everything you got. Mm. That's okay with me. And Bob Dole answers the age question number seven. I'm not too old. I'm cranky. Oh, my God. You've done it again. You know, wisdom comes from age, experience, and intelligence. And if you have some of each, you know, I have some age, some experience, some intelligence. That adds up to wisdom. <laughs> You know, the whole time during the debate, debate, Clinton stood there with a lit match underneath uh, Dole's bad hand. <laughs> you probably noticed it. <laughs> he barbecued it. It's a great debate. So there you have it, the well. last presidential debate. Bob Dole, of course, would like another debate, and he said I'd like that debate to also include the other presidential candidates, including Ross Perot and Ralph Nader. Hmm. However, Bob, uh, Bill Clinton is not uh, open to that idea and as far as he's concerned this is the last time you will see the two of them together the president's election people are so confident that he's in good shape after this second debate flash polls after the debate show the president uh, beating Bob Dole by a two to one margin oh yeah in the minds of viewers so they're going to go off and start campaigning in Republican strongholds they don't even think they have to worry about their base of support they're now going after new voters hmm. Meanwhile, the uh, Republicans are advising to jump off their singing ship oh, oh that my. is Bob Dole. See, the bait goes on the hook <laughs> to catch the fish. Yes. <laughs> and start uh, campaigning in a way that says, Bob Dole, we know he's going to lose, but do we want a, a Congress that is hmm. totally Democratic hmm. as well so that this president doesn't have anything to stop it? Now, Rabbi, you're a black Jew, so now blacks traditionally are not uh, big voters, and the Jews are big voters. So how do you think the black Jews will do? Well, see, this is a tough one, see, because the black Jew, the white Jew will go to the polls to vote. Right. But the black Jew will mug him on his way to the polls. So you think the black Jews will mug the white Jew? Yeah. All right, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah, Amazing, yeah. Rabbi. See, see, being black and Jewish, you would be robbing your own apartment. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yesterday, police arrested the parents of nine young children. And then you would beg yourself for help. All right. Malnourished and disease-ridden in their filthy salt Bronx <laughs> apartment yesterday. Right. But family members blame the kids' health problems, including rat bites, lead poisoning, and head lice on a long-running housing dispute that left the apartment vermin-infested and with a collapsed ceiling and broken refrigerator. If you go out in traffic... You would be looking into the car's headlights. <laughs> I did nothing wrong, Carmen Nevis says, and uh, she's barking up the wrong tree. The police were not listening. They said they were stunned at the conditions in the apartment. The children ages one <laughs> to nine were living in conditions they said they had hardly if ever seen hmm. a worse situation. Interesting. <laughs> Meanwhile, the neighbors who watched the police take the children out of the uh, fecal-infested apartment. Oh. Fecal. Fecal-infested. Rabbi, you just lost your accent. Yeah, I know. Well, no, see. see Gilbert oh, Gilbert Gottfried's here. here. With the rabbi. Right. With the rabbi. Right. The rabbi's been so quiet. I mean, Gilbert's been so quiet. Wow. But anyway, when they took the children out, of course, the neighbors gathered around, and here is one angry woman responding to the fact that the parents have now been charged hmm. with child abuse. I'm glad Gilbert's here. The rabbi stopped being funny at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Number 12. Number 12. All right. <laughs> Gilbert. Here's an angry woman who uh, uh, disagrees with the police action. <laughs> She got nine kids. If you have nine kids and you have a messy house, you got to feed nine kids. You think you can handle cleaning up a mess and, you know, taking care of nine kids? Come on. If welfare's so concerned, then why don't they send someone that's willing to help her out? Ooh. Well, they, they must, uh, she must be from up north. <laughs> <laughs> she must be a mom, too. She's about a fuco. <laughs> I don't know what anybody's yelling about. So She's anyway, shouting. She, mm. Yeah, she somebody <laughs> yeah. should help the woman rather than locking her up or taking mm. her children away. Yeah. This whole society will snuff you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they said when they killed the woman? What? My bad. <laughs> Boy, you know, Rabbi. You know all the expressions. He is uh, a black uh, Jew, I yeah. guess. What does nine pound mean? 
Uh, nine pounds. Uh, like I said before, it is more than an eight pound. <laughs> okay. And less than a ten pound. <laughs> All right. Why don't you remember? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Doesn't seem important. Incredible story of the day, Howard. Here's a black expression for you, uh, Rabbi. Get out. <laughs> what does that mean? It means get the hell out. <laughs> it means we're sick of you. <laughs> you like that? You like that expression? Keep it's very direct. <laughs> get out. It's more subtle. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Robin, is there anything else in the news? Yes, but I have to find another reason to get the story out of right, Go ahead. A I'll give Gilbert a plug meanwhile. Oh, Gilbert, you're here too, right? Oh, yes. Right. No, yes. Tonight at Caroline's in New York, two shows. That's exciting for you. That's a big room. That's very exciting. Right. Everyone's going to love seeing you there. And the rabbi won't be there, will he? <laughs> Also, Gilbert is the voice of the parrot in the video Aladdin and who the king cares? of thieves. Yeah. <laughs> who cares? It's true. Who cares? Now, what else is... Uh... The most incredible story of the day. Did you hear this? A former Queens lawyer he is arguing that he shouldn't be locked up hmm. on the latest charges that he is threatening the life of his mistress because he has to go home and take care of his blind wife. Hmm. But the reason she's blind, Howard, is because he paid Hitman to throw lie in her face hmm. back in, like, 1959. I remember this case. Because she wanted to leave him. Yeah. That's he he loved her so much, he threw lie in her face and blinded her, and then when he got out of jail, he married her. Right. She married him. He got on TV. This is an incredible hmm. story. He blinds the woman by having Hitman throw lie in her face. He winds up spending 14 years in jail. Then when he gets out, he goes on TV and proposes to the woman. She marries him because like, no one wants to go out with her because she's blind. And that's what he said to her when he, the, he threw the lie in her face. He says, I'm going to fix it so nobody will want you. Right. So I guess in that 14 years, nobody wanted her. And she wound up married to him. Yeah. And now he has a mistress. He's had a mistress for something like five years or so, and he's been running around with this woman. The woman wanted out of the relationship, so he started calling her and threatening her and saying, it's not going to be like 1959. I'm not going to just blind you. I'm going to kill you so you can't testify against me. He learned from his last mistake. Oh, isn't that something? <laughs> so anyway, I thought that was interesting that he was trying I to get... I should start having sex with blind women. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll have a shot. He said that, um, you know, his, his argument in court that he should get bail was because he has to go home and take care of the blind wife. Meanwhile, mm. the blind wife yesterday said, I don't know anything about this. Right. I, you know, she's very cheery. I think she's going to keep him in jail. Right. I think so. <laughs> but I thought that's a fascinating story. This guy, uh, Bert Bugatch. <laughs> he blinded his lover several years ago and was threatening to kill his latest mistress. In the black community, when they say Bugatch, what does that mean? Bert Bugatch. <laughs> it means I will blind you. <laughs> I'm going to boogatch you. Boogatch. Watch it all. I'm going to boogatch you. <laughs> With my butter fugo. With my butter fugo. There's right. more, more evidence in the paper today of uh, Mick Jagger's philandering. We have heard reports recently that Jerry Hall is seeking uh, out legal advice to terminate her marriage to Mick Jagger. They are now saying that a... Now she woke summer, up? Now she woke up. The guy's been cheating for like yeah, so long. Yeah, she hasn't just awakened. I guess oh. she thinks this is enough already. I see. She's forgiven him many times. How much more is she supposed to take? Nothing. But uh, they're now saying that at the Carlisle Hotel, Mick Jagger had both Jerry Hall and the Czech model girlfriend in different rooms in the same hotel oh, that's at the same great. time. Like and a John Ritter comedy. Yeah. Running in two rooms for a three-week period, and they don't think Jerry Hall knew anything about it. Fantastic. Uh, like the Ropers would be watching. <laughs> I want to do stuff like that. <laughs> and it was pretty hysterical because all of the hotel staff was watching this go on, I suppose. Fantastic. They say for two weeks, uh, or three weeks, he had this going on. Two weeks ago, he was caught making out with Uma Thurman at the Viper Room. Yeah. And then a day later, was also found with the Czech model at another hotel in Los Angeles. So, Jerry Hall, this whole story leads me to believe that Jerry Hall must be a rocket scientist. <laughs> <laughs> a brilliant woman. <laughs> well, there are some people, according to Liz Smith, who say this doesn't necessarily mean the end of the marriage either. They've been not. going through this for years. Of course. And maybe this time uh, they'll be able to patch it up again. Who knows? Rabbi, uh, as a leader in the black community, what do you think of a man who has several women? 
and, and cheats on his wife. Well, I think that is part to the cause. You do? That you should have several women. Right. And you should get them impregnated. <laughs> right. Now, the only problem... Why, to put more black Jews on the planet? Yeah, to put more black Jews. To for survival. Right. Now, the only reason that I hate Mick Jagger is because he stole the black Jews' music. Right. <laughs> okay. That's black Jewish music. Yeah, that's yeah, black That's Jewish the kind of music, music you guys make. Yeah. Right. It's, in, in fact, satisfaction is a ripoff of this ancient prayer. Now, why, as a, a rabbi, I know this about you, why can't you impregnate anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Will no black Jewish women go near you? <laughs> no uh, black Jewish women? No white Jewish women? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, no Norwegian women. <laughs> right. You got a big problem on your head. No women. No type that, women. If that blind woman is still available, I'll just She's taken. She just called up. She don't want you. <laughs> And what else, Robin? She'd have a, rather have a guy who blinded her. <laughs> yeah, she can smell. She called in. <laughs> you don't smell so great, Rabbi. That's Rabbi Farragon. <laughs> Tommy Morrison, the first heavyweight boxer to uh, come out and say that he is HIV positive, says that he will return to the ring on November 3rd to fight an undetermined opponent hmm. somewhere near Tokyo, Japan. Yeah, he'll be fighting himself. He'll be on the undercard for the uh, George Foreman Crawford Grimsley fight. Hmm. Hmm. Well, hello there. He retired in February after learning that he was HIV positive, but now he says after much study, he has uh, decided that no one has ever become HIV positive after a boxing match. So you know they going to continue to fight. You know they're trying to sell the first thirty rows to that seat, and they can't. <laughs> All thirty rows are empty. <laughs> Amazing. Wonder why people are so so uptight. <laughs> and finally, today there's a new movie opening mm. up starring Brad Pitt called Sleeper. Yes. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> no, it's you again. <laughs> and there seems to be some controversy about it with the Catholic Church because, of course, it involves a uh, Catholic reform school, a priest. Hmm. And young boys... And they walk into a bar. Oh, no. <laughs> And that never happens in real life. And so the Catholic Church is all up in arms and they are demanding hmm. some kind hmm. of information from... Uh, Tell me more! The people who <laughs> wrote the book the movie is based on, as well as the people who created the movie. It's a Barry Levinson film. Hmm. Here is a man named uh, Michael Donahue. Oh, is he now? William Donahue. <laughs> William Donahue to voice his objections. To oh, him. what does he have to say? <laughs> We have a message to you, Mr. Levinson, from the Catholic League. We need to know its exact authenticity, because if you are slandering priests in Catholic institutions, then we need to know. And what we have said from the very beginning, name names. Let us know. Who is the priest that was involved who perjured himself that De Niro was playing? Who is the assistant district attorney? You can shut us up by simply saying that this is a novel, that it's not a true story. But people, I'm telling you, in the latest edition of the paperback uh, of Sleepers, where they have the picture of the movie stars on the cover, on page two, you will still find that this is a true story. Yeah, there's no uh, priest uh, with boys. Well, I don't know if it's a priest with boys book uh, story. It's right. about uh, <laughs> abuse in a reform school. And they, you know, it looks more like physical abuse. Oh, I see. Then it looks like sexual abuse, but the Catholic Church is up in arms. Anyway, here's more of William Donahue. It's our understanding that not only will Valentine Books not cooperate, now Barry Levinson's trying to slough it off, but Crocketera has gone into hiding. I think perhaps the press could ask him why. So there, that's everybody. Hmm. And here's a clip of the film. Okay. We need somebody to take the stand and say they were John and Tommy on the night of the murder. So you figured if you had a priest, it would be perfect. Not just any priest. Wow. I'd rather see Aladdin. <laughs> with a dumb parrot. Well, I'm sure that Sleepers is glad for the controversy to get all this free publicity. Rabbi, you're a religious man. Yes. And you must have schools and things in the uh in your religion you do not have any uh problem with this, do you? With young children and abuse? Well, no. See, uh the reason that the white priests have a problem with the little boy mm -hmm. is because the white priest doesn't have as strong arms to hold him down. Right. The black 
streets could hold him down right. and threaten him with a knife. So okay. there's yeah. no problem. There's no, no, problem. no problem. All right, and plus, the black man can run after the little boy. I see. <laughs> and uh, you people should be ashamed of yourself. There's one other thing I want to mention here. Christopher Reeve will be in a box at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> really going to wheel him in in a box? <laughs> He'll be watching the equestrian events at the National Horse Show from his own box at Madison Square Garden. This is Garden. National Horse Show? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen a bunch of whores marched out like that? Yeah. Can I, could, could I please get some tickets? And why does Christopher Reeve need a whore? <laughs> whore? <laughs> He's got a wife. Let him do the honorable thing. Reeve is wrapping up his directorial debut on an HBO movie about a man dying of AIDS. So he's hmm. even working as a director. What the hell is Christopher Reeve doing at a horse show? If you were a horse person, would you want to see Christopher Reeve there? <laughs> it's like Jews going to an oven sale. I mean, why would you do it? Hey, who wants Christopher Reeve at a horse show? Anyway, Robin, fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, Gilbert Gottfried will be doing uh, two shows tonight at Caroline's. Now, because there are two shows, does that mean at least it'll be a shorter show? <laughs> each show? You have to shorten them up? Well, how long will each show go? <laughs> I see. What? I'll be, I'll be driven off stage. I see. <laughs> is that what you do? You keep going until you're driven off stage? Uh, Gilbert is so funny. I've seen him at Caroline's. It's great. Go tonight to Caroline's in New York for two shows. Also, Gilbert is the voice of the parrot in the video, That's Aladdin. And the Rabbi uh, Farrakhan. <laughs> And the Rabbi Farrakhan. <laughs> and the Rabbi Farrakhan will be there tonight in whiteface. <laughs> All right, thank you, Gilbert. And also, Jackie the Joke Man, another funny guy. Jackie Penthouse, Joe Peck, Martling. His Sergeant Pecker and the Joke Man are both 78 minutes of filthy jokes. Gilbert looks at Jackie. <laughs> like, you can't believe it. <laughs> Sergeant Pecker and the Joke Man. Every time... Pretty good about his plug until it's followed by Jackie. Yeah, you know what it is? Every time I start reading the plug, Gilbert just looks at Jackie. And he's just like, he can't believe it. He's just pissed off because I get laid. Oh. And he's Sergeant Pecker and the joke man about 78 minutes of filthy jokes. Each is twelve dollars plus four dollars shipping You're and handling. Gilbert, stop it! See Dio said buy two get one free. Call one eight hundred three two three King. Can't believe it. One eight hundred three two three King. Friday and Saturday. No. <laughs> Gilbert, what? Is, why is it so funny to hear Jackie's plug? It's a silly plug, isn't it? <laughs> Friday and Saturday, November one and two, Jackie at the Riviera Hotel. On the strip in Las Vegas. <laughs> Even that's funny. <laughs> for information, for information, visit Jokeland on the web at JackieJokeMan dot com. Uh. <laughs> All right. Well, the two of you are two funny guys, and good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly enough room in the world for both of you. Not both this of room. No. Jackie, good to have you back. Uh, Gilbert, always good to have you here. And uh, blah, 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 blah. I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, that too. Oh, yeah, and we have a couple of them. Sure. You're listening to The Howard Stern Show.